Okay, so this question says the primary decay mode for negative pi ion is that. Uh, oh, let me draw a uh, uh, not free body diagram. Feynman diagram for this process. I mean, you don't need it, but I think I've drawn Feynman diagrams for other processes in this chapter. So let me just show you what that looks like. So in order to draw Feynman diagram for this process, you have to know two things. One, um, the, the kind of the, ele the elementary vertex vertices, vertexes for weak interaction. For weak interaction, the elementor vertex looks something like this. Um, you got a particle coming in, particle going out, and the type of particle will change from one to the other. Like it's an up quark coming in, down quark going out, and the, the particle that mediates the interaction will be the W boson. So if you had up quark and anti-down quark coming in, then in order to conserve charge at this vertex, it would be a positive W boson that's going out. So that's the one thing you have to know, what they, you have kind of to know the Lego pieces to fit together. And uh, you have to know the quark composition of this pi ion. And uh, if it's up and anti-down, then that'll be positive pi ion. So uh, this must be a down and anti-up quark. So, um, so, you know, for what I've drawn here, you would have to basically reverse the directions. So it must be a down quark coming in and either up quark going out or anti-up quark coming in. Left to right is the direction of time. And uh, let me just modify this for the complete diagram. So, so these two annihilating would result in a virtual W minus boson. Virtual because, you know, up and down quarks don't have enough energy to produce a real W boson. And this virtual W boson will decay into two leptons, a muon and a muon antineutrino. So a muon there is the, um, that's the particle, and the neutrino would be the antiparticle of that. So... So yeah, this is the Feynman diagram for the process. And uh, one thing that Feynman diagram is nice for at our level is it ensures that you can kind of set up for conservation laws that like drawing this diagram correctly automatically ensures that charge is conserved. Because uh, there's no way to draw correct uh, Feynman diagram where charge is not conserved. Um, and uh, now at a higher level, like a gradual level particle physics, this diagram is used to organize calculation for the decay amplitudes, which we are not doing, you know, it's, that's gradual level physics. So um, it's asking, what is the kinetic energy released in this decay? So for that, I need to know the mass differences between the particles that are interacting. And uh, we will treat the neutrino as being practically massless. Uh, and frankly, mu neutrino probably isn't massless, but we don't know how much mass it has. We know that it must be less than, I don't know, one electron volt. So, <laughs> so we'll treat it as practically massless. Um, and then, uh, I, so I need to look up their masses. Let me use this opportunity to plug a resource. So it's a particle data group pdg.lbs.gov, they are the keeper of uh, particle information. And there are different ways you can use it. I think uh, one time before I showed you the summary table, I think uh, you can use interactive listing. That's probably a little bit easier. So um, here I can look up my lepton. Uh, that's going to be muon. And I can look up my baryon um, uh, meson. Uh, that would be the light unflavored, that would be the pi ion. So, uh, muon, uh, here's the muon mass uh, in atomic mass unit, which I don't actually want. I think I want the number in the MeV unit, because that's going to be more easier for us. So, muon mass in the MeV unit will be 105.66 MeV. I think that's enough significant figures. And let's look at the pion mass. 
negative pion mass. Now, uh, negative and positive pion will have the same mass, but the neutral pion will have a different mass. I want the listing for the charged pion. So the charged pion, its mass, yeah, they just stop giving us <laughs> unified atomic mass units. Just do everything in MBVs and it'll be fine. 139.57. M E P. So in terms of how much kinetic energy is released, um, so it's going to be the difference. 139.57 minus 105.66. So doing that in my head is 33. Point, um, is it 99? Nine? That doesn't sound right. 33.89. Eight nine, no nine one. <laughs> Let me make sure that's right. Yeah, thirty three point nine one and maybe yeah. So that's how much kinetic energy is released in this decay. Now, um, for the part B, it says using conservation of momentum, find out how much kinetic energy each of the decay products receive, given pion is at rest to any decay. You may assume that the muon and neutrino. Now, there's a one. Um, Kind of a good thing to guess. So one good guess, which would be true if this was an electron, is to guess, hmm, maybe um, muon and muon and neutrino, their masses are basically massless compared to pion mass. If that were true, then you can assume that this kinetic energy will be evenly split between the two. Let's give that a try. I have a feeling it'll be wrong answer, but let's give that a try. So that'll be um, 16 point, um, gotta start trying to do this in my head, it's taking longer than it needs to, but I think I can do it, so 16 point, <laughs> uh, is it 955, five. Uh, let me do 6.955, add them together, then it's 32, carry the 1, 33 point, it was eight. Now at five five. I think that's right. I gotta do this calculation with the calculator. Okay, that's right. And if I submit, I think it's gonna say it's wrong. Let's give it a try. Yeah. So um, we have to. Oh, oh, there's actually another uh, guess that I can do. Another guess that I can do, again, kind of trying to take a shortcut, is I can imagine, hmm, maybe this amount of energy will be split evenly between the two. If that's the case, then the anterior neutrino kinetic energy would be um, 139.57 divided by 2. I don't think that's going to be right. But let me just do, you know, try it one other shortcut, and if that doesn't work, I'll do it the long way. 139.57 divided by 2. So 69.785. 69.785. And let's see if that's right. If that's right, then I'll modify this to make it. Oh, you know what? I can see already that that's not going to be right. Yeah, so don't say that's wrong. All right, so we have to do it the long way, which is to use what we learned in Chapter 7 with uh, uh, relativity. So it's a decay of... So you have to imagine I have a pion that's at rest that's going to decay into two pieces, muon, that's going this way. It's going to have some energy and momentum, and it has some amount of mass. And a neutrino, which will go the other way, it'll have some energy and momentum. And its mass will be zero, which means, you know, as I said, its momentum is E over C. So... In this decay, uh, let me rearrange you a little bit for uh, space. So in this decay, we can imagine, oh, the energy momentum four vector will be conserved. So we say four momentum is conserved. So we write down the conservation law equation. We say our initial energy, that would be the energy of the pion. Uh, let me just write out what it is. It's the rest energy of the pion is equal to the final energy, which will be the... Um, let me try to write it this way. The 
energy of the muon plus energy of the neutrino. I think I might be able to work this out without involving the gamma factors. Because we're not being asked for their speed, I don't think we really need a gamma factor. So this is one equation. And uh, we need to say the momentum is conserved. So momentum of the pi on, which will be zero, is equal to the momentum of the muon, muon. Let's say it's moving to left, negative. So minus momentum of the muon plus the momentum of the neutrino, which is going in the positive direction, and which will be the energy of the neutrino divided by C. So I have one, two equations. Let's see how many unknowns we have. We don't know the energy of muon. We don't know energy of neutrino. Uh, and we don't know the momentum of the muon. So we have three unknowns, two equations, which isn't enough. We need a third equation. And that third equation that doesn't involve um, any gamma factor would be this energy momentum relationship. That energy of the muon squared, it, it has parts that's attributable to the rest energy. Mass of the muon c squared squared plus there's the part that only comes along with the kinetic energy. Momentum of the muon c squared. So this is going to be my third equation. And um, let me be a bit lazy and do this calculation automatically using Sage Math. <laughs> so uh, let me use the Sage Math cell. Uh, sage cell. Um, so I'm going to declare some of my variables e mu, e nu. Um, do I need a method? Yeah, I need the m pi. And uh, let me do this in a version where my c is equal to 1. So uh, for everything I'm, so um, I, I know I promised I won't use a c equals 1 unit, but for these units, it's the c equals 1 makes everything so much easier. So I'm just going to do that. c is equal to 1. <laughs> and uh, I think I need symbol for momentum of the muon. Okay, so those are my variables. And my equation one is mass of the pi on is equal to uh, energy of the muon plus energy of the neutrino. Equation two, zero is equal to minus momentum of the muon. Oh, I don't have momentum of muon. Oh, wait, I do. Uh, plus energy of the neutrino, I see is equal to one. Uh, equation three is equal to uh, energy of the muon squared is equal to, oh wait, we got a, another sign there, um, mass of the muon, oh I don't have mass of muon, I need the mass of muon uh, squared plus the momentum of the muon squared. Okay, those are my three equations and I tell Sage Maths to solve. For, um, I'll, and I'll put it into solutions variable. Solve for equation one, two, three simultaneously. For my three unknowns, which are, I think I care about the energy of the neutrino the most. So that'll give me a lot of information. And then I guess I technically care about the energy of the muon and the momentum of the muon. But I actually won't need them. So, okay, let me solve for those. And assuming that it can solve then I can get everything I need from energy of the neutrino. Oh, wait, I forgot to print. So, um, okay, good. So I really only need uh, my zeroth, zeroth element, which will be the energy of the neutrino. So to the energy of the neutrino, now I can substitute in the variables I have. Uh, mass of the muon, which is uh, 105.66 MeV. Uh, mass of the pi on, which is 139.57. And then that's it. I don't need anything else. So this will um, immediately give me the kinetic energy of the neutrino, 29.79 MeV. So uh, kinetic energy of the neutrino being 29.79. 29.79 MeV. 
I can do the rest of the calculation without needing any analytical expression because the kinetic energy of the muon must be basically be um, the differences, you know. The energy you're starting with, 139.57. Uh, take care of the energy of the energy that the neutrino takes away, 29.79. And then take care of the energy that the muon rest energy has, minus 105.66. Then you are left with a 4.12 MeV. Yeah, which is pretty small. That's no wonder <laughs> splitting it evenly didn't work. Yeah. So, so yeah, that's the answer. Um, and uh, yeah, so there's no way around having to do the whole relativistic calculation. But, you know, you can set up your system of equations and have, um, and have uh, uh, you know, uh, computer algebra system do the tedious algebra for us. You don't have to do the tedious algebra yourself.